Hey guys, I don't know about you, but what I used to love about buying a DVD wasn't so much for the movie, but for those special features. All that behind the scenes goodness. Seeing these clips of actors in their motion capture suits and then the process of how they take that data and insert CGI into the scene, it blew my mind. <laughs> I've been wanting to try this technique of adding CGI into live footage for a while and with Cinema 4D's object tracker in R19, it's now insanely easy. Easy enough for me to do? Give it a shot. <laughs> now, motion capture suits are expensive, so I wanted to show you how you can still do this on a budget to get some really good results. We tried doing a couple of different tests using a morph suit and pinned styrofoam balls to use as trackers, and we got some good results, but it was very uncomfortable. We then tried using a large beanie, and this actually worked really well for the high contrast against the trackers. With that in mind, I want to show you the basics of the object tracker and how we can track a target from live footage and overlay an object inside Cinema 4D. Let's get tracking. Okay guys, let's jump straight in. I want to give you a basic understanding of how to start to play with the object tracker. First thing we're going to do, we'll come up to our motion tracker tab and we'll add a motion tracker into our scene. What we'll do next is load in some footage that I've got pre-prepared with some of these object trackers in our scene. So this first test example I'm gonna show you is we use some styrofoam balls and we pin them onto this large beanie. And what we're gonna do is use these styrofoam balls as our track points. First thing we'll need to do is identify a portion of this clip that we wanna to use to track the object in. So by scrubbing through my timeline here, I can see between frame zero and 400, we're getting a, we're getting a lot of nice movement and this is the section I'm gonna target and identify in our motion tracker. So once we've identified the portion that we want to target, we can set the start frame and the frame stop in our footage section here. So in our frame stop, I'll set it to 400 and I'll do the same on our timeline so the two match up. And you'll notice we've also got this resampling bar and this allows us to increase the quality that the video is playing back at. So what I'll do is increase that to 100% and this will give us the sharpest quality in our footage. Now comes the fun part of tracking our markers. So let's come over to our 2D tracking tab and what we're gonna be doing is some manual tracking. Now, one thing to note is we can zoom in on this footage to make it easier to identify these, these trackers. But you'll also note you can't use the standard move tools to navigate around the footage. So if you do find yourself zooming into the footage and needing to return back to that full frame, all you need to do is in the motion tracker tab, come over to the footage tab and we can set full footage and this will snap it back to that original state. You can even see when I'm zooming in, it's actually changing our footage scale and won't affect the scene. It just makes it easier to zoom in and identify these trackers. So first up, what I'm gonna do is show you an example of what we want our trackers to look like. So here's one I've prepared already and you can see when I play it, this tracker sticks to that styrofoam ball and follows the entire motion in the scene. We also see a bit of a path where the track is gonna go and what this is showing us is 10 frames forward and 10 frames backwards of the selected frame. So now what I'm gonna do is show you how we can set up one of these trackers. So let's come over to our 2D tracking tab in our motion tracker, come over to manual tracking, and this is where we're gonna start adding those trackers. Now what I found easiest when setting up these motion trackers was to start from frame zero. So let's come over to frame zero, and I'm gonna hold down control and click onto one of our targets here. And this is gonna add a tracker into our scene. We can then increase our target area so it captures that whole tracker and just decrease our search area a bit. Once we've got that in the position we're happy with, we're gonna hit manual track. And you can see what that does, it's some manual tracking in the scene. Now when you're doing this manual tracking, you will need to you will need to review all your tracks. So what we're gonna do now is go frame by frame through this track to make sure it's tracked it correctly. So you can see I'm just framing forward here, but that track is gonna to start to leave our scene when we're in this zoom state. So what I like to do is come up to motion tracker and say lock view on tracks. And now when we scrub forward in our timeline, that track is gonna stay in its fixed position. And this just makes it easier to track. Okay, here we go. So I've got to frame, so I've got to frame 17 and our tracker has failed. So, so what we'll need to do now is just reposition that tracker back onto our identified ball here. What it's then gonna try and do is update its tracking for the remaining frames. You can already see we've come into another problem in our next frame. It's actually identified one of the other balls as its tracker. So what we need to do now is grab that and just reposition it back onto the tracker we want it to. And we'll just keep scrubbing forward and just fixing our just fixing our manual tracker whenever it seems to slip off the footage. Now we're doing this now we're doing these tests, you always come across things you would have done differently. 
And in this case, our trackers were so close together, we couldn't, we couldn't give it that large search area because just like you saw before, it starts to identify other trackers as its tracker and this isn't what we want. So next time what I would do is perhaps use smaller trackers and definitely spread them further apart. So I'm just scrubbing through the timeline here, making sure that tracker stays on that target. And this is looking pretty good. Now, whenever the tracker turns red and it seems to slip, all I'm doing is just grabbing it and repositioning it onto that target. Now with researching these object trackers, I came across, came across a couple of different opinions. Opinions were a bit split as to exactly how many trackers you need in your scene to be able to target an object. Now the votes were split between seven and eight trackers in your scene. So, so I think it's just easier to aim for eight and then you know you're safe. So with that in mind, you'll need to repeat this step on at least eight trackers in your scene. So what I'll do is set them up and then I'll show you how we can make an object follow this motion. Great, so I've now got these eight tracks set up following the motion of my head. So what I'm gonna do is select all these tracks and add a motion tracker into our scene. I'll then come over to the trackers tab, come down and click the assign selected button. And what this is gonna do is insert all those motion trackers into our object tracker. With these now in our object tracker, we'll come over to the reconstruction tab and click the run 3D solve for object button. You can see in the bottom left hand corner, it's just thinking about it. And now we can see this object tracker has these user features and it's got all those trackers inserted. Now what you're gonna notice here is some of the, we've got these green and we've also got these red trackers. And what this is identifying is good and bad tracks. Green means good and red means bad. So with the tracks we've got here, they're not great. And that comes down to what I was saying earlier about these being too close and our object tracker not being able to calculate this well enough. And great, now these eight trackers are assigned to our object tracker. So let's come back to frame zero and what we're gonna do is just add a null into our scene. And what we're gonna use this null for is to target the position of the object tracker. So let's come over to our character tags and we'll add a constraint tag to our null. And what we wanna constrain is the position, scale and rotation. So with that selected, a PSR tab will pop up and what we're gonna do is target those user features from the object tracker. We'll just simply drop that in and now when I press play with the null selected, you can see it maintains the position exactly where the head is. So all we need to do now is add an object into our scene, drop it into that null. I'll hit shift C and say reset PSR so it starts in the exact same position of our null. Now I'm just gonna scale this up so it captures my entire head. And now if I jump into our four views, we can actually see those object trackers. And because these are on the front of my face, what I'm gonna do is just pull our sphere back a bit so it's positioned more correctly. And now when I press play, that sphere is targeting my head and following that position. And how, and how simple was that? And you get some really cool results. Now I thought it'd be worthwhile jumping into another scene that I did some tests with and show you a couple of the issues that came up during the process and how I would attack them differently next time. So in this example here, my very obliging girlfriend dressed up in a morph suit and we stuck some of these styrofoam balls onto her face, but this time giving them more distance apart. So we were able to, so we're able to increase that search area a bit, but also the trackers weren't getting confused with nearby targets. Now, although the position was better this time, we actually shot at quite a low frame rate. This actually gave some blurry motion to the trackers and made it a little bit more difficult. So that's something else to consider when doing these motion trackers to make sure they're nice and clear and they don't change and they don't skew during the movement. Now, of course, we had to throw on some shiny spheres, being dynamic and bouncing around our scene. But of course, that's just a start. I'm really excited about diving in and learning more about this motion tracker. I think this is really powerful and super simple to just jump in and just start playing around with a couple of the features and pulling off some pretty cool results. All right, I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. And I'll see you guys again soon. All right, cheers.